It's my pleasure to introduce Matt Lucas, the Associate Director of the Center for Carbon Removal. Matt brings to his work today a background in venture capital, and he's leading a whole range of partnership efforts to advance the beneficial utilization of CO2 captured from power plants in industrial facilities. One of those partnerships is right here in the state of Wyoming, but in many other things that he'll talk about. Uh, the other thing I'd like to just mention is uh, our partner, the Center for Carbon Removal, cuts a wide swath, not only on carbon removal generally, but on carbon utilization specifically. And they've been a very active and important partner in the Carbon Capture Coalition. And so, Matt and Noah, thank you for that. Uh, welcome, Matt Lucas. Great. Thank you so much, Brett. So I'm thrilled to be here today to tell you about Carbon Tech, the largest industrial sector that doesn't yet exist. Seems like sort of a strange thing. My name is Matt Lucas, I work with the Center for Carbon Removal, and our mission is to accelerate the deployment of those technologies that help clean up yesterday's emissions. Like Julio said, we call that carbon removal or negative emissions. Um, carbon Tech has real deep personal resonance for me. I used to be a corporate venture capitalist for one of the largest companies in the world. And I saw how difficult it was for us to invest in innovative technologies. So I left the big company, and I worked at three um, Silicon Valley startups as an entrepreneur and an engineer, um, where we were building hardware based on scientific fundamental breakthroughs coming from America's top universities. That was really hard, too. So it's those experiences as an investor and an entrepreneur that make me really excited about the carbon tech opportunity, but also wide-eyed to the challenges that we face. What I want to talk about today is the path to the new carbon economy. In the hopefully not too distant future, we'll get to a point, like Julio showed, where the uh, historic coupling between prosperity and pollution breaks. Prosperity continues to increase, and emissions go, go down, 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 hopefully to zero and past zero. And it's that deeply decarbonized yet economically prosperous future, which is what I think all drive us here today. Our question is, how do we get there as quickly as possible? The path today, in red, is typical of what we have in the electric power sector today with a focus on CCS. This is a really important path. We need to decarbonize the electric power sector, and it's a great idea because it's undoubtedly the quickest way, the shortest path, between where we are today and the new carbon economy. But we know that there are some challenges denoted symbolically by the mountain. Right? We're going to need some new policy support. Um, we have perception issues. And we have a scale dependency with the power sector, so we know that it's challenging, regardless of how great your technology or business is, to get it financed when each one is a billion dollars. So what I want to posit to you today is an additional path, a green path, the carbon tech path. Uh, next slide, please. Um, now, this path is a little bit longer and more meandering than the red path, but uh, it uses existing policy, like 45Q and state incentives. It has a fresh, aspirational image. And it unlocks the power of American innovation and entrepreneurship to uh, do bite-sized projects, right? Things that are maybe a little easier to finance. Now, as we wander down the green path, and hopefully because we have those extra advantages, we'll be able to run even faster and get to the new carbon economy sooner. We're gonna have some great collateral benefits. We're gonna build that carbon tech sector the biggest uh, sector that doesn't yet exist. That has great advantages for jobs, for revitalizing manufacturing, for energy security and supply chain security. But even more, we're gonna build a broad uh, political constituency, bipartisan and geographically diverse, which is interested in smart carbon management policy, not just because it's good for the climate, but because it's also good for business. Now, I've been talking about carbon tax, so let's go ahead and dump. Carbon tech is an emerging industrial system that captures, transports, and converts various forms of waste carbon into products and services in a way that is both profitable and climate beneficial. We can make a huge diversity of products, uh, some of which are shown here. Now, the strength of carbon tech is in its flexibility. So we have a couple of different feedstocks. You can get CO2 from industrial sources. But you can also go to the land sector to collect biomass residues and manure and any municipality can contribute garbage. So what this means is that regardless of whether you're uh, urban or rural, industrial or agrarian, you have a place to play in contributing feedstock to the carbon. 
we can use a whole bunch of different processes to upgrade that waste carbon, right? So we can use electricity, heat, light, biology. We can bring the entire suite of American science and innovation to bear on this problem. And that's gonna result in a whole bunch of different products. We're not talking about um, innovating in just one industrial segment, but in a whole variety of industrial. This is a full economic shift. Now, what I wanna do in the rest of my time is share with you a couple of reasons that I'm especially excited about carbon capture. First is the enormous market opportunity. Just last year in the United States alone, in these four uh, industrial segments, we had a total addressable market of over a trillion dollars. I'm happy to talk with you offline about the assumptions and the analysis that went into this market sizing, but even if you don't trust me, you might trust McKinsey, who, McKinsey, who uh, did this study a couple years ago and found a similar market size. If you go to uh, worldwide last year, it was a $5 trillion opportunity. Now, this is to say, this is a really big number. It's a really big economic opportunity. Somebody's gonna make a lot of money when they figure out carbon tech. It also points to scale. So anything that we do for climate has to be big. And I posit to you without sizing this in tons of carbon or whatever unit you prefer, that if you're doing something that's got the potential to be trillions with a T, you're probably gonna be relevant. The other thing is that this is geographically distributed. So what I've plotted here are point source CO2 emitters across the United States where each color dot is a different sector. So red is industrial uh, electricity generators. These are, well, we start with electricity because that's where CCS is conventionally focused. But if we expand this opportunity to additional sources, the opportunity gets even bigger. So here we have industrial sources in blue. They tend to be smaller scale and often have a lower cost of capture. If we move further to fossil fuel production and use, this is oil gas and coal, including acid gas removal, we have very low cost of capture. If we go further, we have mining and minerals. And lastly, my favorite, biogenic emissions. These are the ones that come from biomass through things like ethanol and pulp and paper. What's super cool about biogenic emissions is that when you sequester them, you get that negative emission or that carbon removal that we were talking about can roll back the clock on climate change. What I want you to take away from this is that this is an opportunity in all 50 states. There's no natural monopoly here. There will never be an OPEC of carbon tech, right? So whether you're a red state or a blue state, urban or rural, you can be part of this. This is a nationwide opportunity. And when you uh, plot the existing carbon tech operations, you see that same geographic diversity. So we've plotted here our projects to companies across the United States. Now the startups plotted in green are uh, clustered in the usual coastal places with the notable exception of Northeastern Wyoming, where there's an emerging uh, cluster at their integrated test center. This is really exciting. This isn't, uh, or this is a nationwide opportunity. That's really exciting. I'm really stoked for initial commercial traction. We're gonna hear from the Carbon X Prize later, who's pushing the bounce. We have startups that have built their first commercial facilities and can sell you real product today. We have startup accelerators that are um, mentoring and fostering the next generation of carbon tech innovators. And we have the first um, corporate commitments for uh, helping out with supply chain. We have research and policy leadership. This comes in a lot of different forms from different places. This can be R&D funding. This can be state incentives. This can be federal tax credits like 45Q. And we have thought leadership for folks like the National Academy of Sciences who are helping set the research agenda but we're not done yet, right? I've interviewed over 200 carbon tech stakeholders to understand their barriers to entry. And if I were to summarize it very quickly on the slide, it would be these three points. By going to the carbon tech path, we unlocked the power of American entrepreneurship and innovation. Now we need to make sure that we don't leave those people hanging, right? So we need to support our innovators. We need to help bring investors along. So investors aren't used to seeing carbon tech. And there's some misperceptions that there's not critical mass of capital or continuity of capital. You know, God forbid we, we don't want to leave an investment stranded for lack of follow-up. And the last thing is we need to deconvolute some very complicated supply chains. Many carbon tech products are sold into sophisticated B2B supply chains and they're pretty deep down in the stack. So we're going to need those corporate partnerships in order to drive those products to market. So 
What are we doing about this at the Center for Carbon Removal? What we do is we run Carbon Tech Labs, uh, a virtual startup accelerator that's one of a kind in that it's focused on carbon tech entrepreneurs. We find, fund, and foster the next generation of carbon tech innovators. In many cases, reaching back into university labs through a national network of um, university affiliations, helping them determine their business models, validate their technology, take them to a field site, and ultimately couple them to send them to market. We're uh, thrilled to have the Wyoming Infrastructure Authority, and Jason Beggar is here, as one of our fiscal sponsors. Thank you, Jason. Um, like a child, raising a startup takes a village. And I invite you all to be part of our village. I can assure you that regardless of your organization, affiliation, expertise, professional background, there is a dire need, a real need for you in the Carbon Tech Labs community. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you um, over the next two days and the coming months and years to help turn Carbon Tech into the biggest industrial sector that does exist. Thank you so much for your attention.